Hey folks, Liari here. Today I'm reacting to dual releases by Scott the Waz. I'm excited for this because I like Pokemon. I cannot think of another reason. Let's go. Therapy delivery. Oh, thank God, it came. Better than your uncle's ambulance. Well, it came cold. Oh. I think there's something wrong with me. I'm seeing double. Nah, you're not seeing double. You're just f***ed in the head. Oh, thank oh. God. I, I'm such a big fan. Wait, now I am. Gosh, the gamer cries. There's no passion in the video game industry these days. Unlike back then, all they do now is re-release the same game over and over again. So true. Let's talk. How do we increase our profits? Uh, it's called theft. Or you could just do what you're already doing. Again! This is not helping my case. Have you ever wondered why Pokemon games come in twos? I mean, it's something we're so used to at this point. It's strange when they don't. Two games releasing on the same day, but they're so damn similar. It's like they're each a different side of the same coin. Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. What's the difference between them? I don't know. Turns out the real difference is that mine is better. Yes, true. Dual release. Some may call it an outdated strategy, but I won't say no to another method of size debate. So what's the point of this, and why don't they do it elsewhere? Well, see, if you release two different Pokemon games with minute differences, most people just pick the one with the cover art they like the most. The more diehards will pick the one they find to have the more compelling distinction. That's what I did. Those who need help will buy both. Pokemon one of less. the biggest reasonings behind doing a dual release is the two different versions of the game communicating in some way. So some things you can only get in Pokemon red well if a pokemon blue player links up with a pokemon red player you can trade to get those red exclusives yes. in your blue thus you create a red. sensation where players are incredibly defensive towards the version they picked which encourages more discussion on the games a <laughs> deeper connection towards the series and excuses well i picked pokemon blue because because red is too much for me to handle right now. Pokemon is obviously the most iconic example of this strategy. You may know that as it's the only example I've given. Not sure if this would have been a great opener. All of the traditional mainline Pokemon titles follow this format. I also was heart gold. I didn't play many other generations, but those are the two I remember. I would have chosen Emerald, though. Starting with the launch of Pokemon Red and Green in 1996, only in Japan. Yeah, Red and Green. Odd choices for initial colors. Should have gone with Pokemon Orange and Light Pink. Later on, they released Pokemon Blue as an updated third version, which also became a Pokemon staple. Here in North America, we ended up just getting Red and Blue, which those colors are sworn enemies, making those the dual release over here encourage more debate amongst players of what color to get. Especially considering Pokemon was brand new here, the fact that certain elements were exclusive to each version didn't matter nearly as much. My favorite color was blue, mind you. It's just I fucking love Charmander. So I chose Pokemon Red. Yeah, Mankey's only in Pokemon Red. Oh, so cool. Thank God I picked blue. So the entire point of Pokemon is to try and catch them all, get all the Pokemon. That tagline alone f some kids up for life. It's on the True. box for each version, yet you can't catch them all in either one of these games. The only way is to have a friend with an alternate color. Or the easier solution, buy another game. Ooh, don't forget a second Game Boy and Link cable. Believe me, this is what many actually do with every new Pokemon release. It really makes you think. I should re-download Tinder. This was meant to encourage <laughs> players of Pokemon to interact with each other, like people. Now, did you really need to release the game as two separate but nearly identical versions? Well, let's be fair. That Game Boy Link cable was really only ever utilized in a head-to-head -head multiplayer that? sort of deal. Pokemon was frankly pretty damn revolutionary for allowing you to swap the things you've collected in-game with another player and to also keep said things on your cartridge. It was ingenious, something that really wasn't done before. This was so cool to me, but no one ever wanted to trade Pokemon with me. Sorry, I'm crying. <sighs> and while you would still have incentive to do that if there was just one Pokemon game available, having two made it 100% necessary to link up and trade in order to get everything. Also, it just fit the Pokemon series, getting to pick your starter Pokemon at the beginning, just after getting to pick your favorite color, stone, letter, and Pokemon red and blue plus green in Japan really did a lot for these letters. Well, not in that order. Do you ever see when oh. something is popular, others copy it, but they copy the wrong thing? Like, oh, Pokemon just hit it big, and why is that? Two games, colors, oh, and negligence. Huh. So many series have attempted the dual release. I mean, hey, if Pokemon does it, why can't Bomberman? <laughs> There are laws, you know. Now, Nintendo themselves, they tried applying this format to some of their other franchises, most notably oh, The yeah. Legend of Zelda, with the games Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. Two games released right alongside each other that would connect, though unlike Pokemon, 
These are both different games. They may be cut from the same cloth and have numerous shared elements, but playing one Oracle game does not mean you played the other. These games fundamentally construct a two-parter, though the order in which you play them doesn't matter. Beating one gives you a code to enter in the other to continue on and get the full experience. It isn't like how in Pokemon games, the only difference is I'm wearing a hat this time. No, this is a very unique and cool take on the dual release format. It doesn't feel like they're trying to piggyback on Pokemon's success, rather put their own spin on having two games release at the same time. It showed that if Nintendo was going to do more dual releases, they weren't just gonna do something like different Pokemon in each game. They were gonna do it with dogs. <gasps> Nintendo's Sorry. on the Nintendo DS released in three variants at Best launch, game. each with different dog breeds to pick from. Which dog did you choose? I don't remember. Squirtle. Turns out Nintendo wanted this to feel like you were picking a dog from the pound, so initially the idea was to have 15 separate versions of Nintendo. Oh, I think, okay, wait, 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 wait. That one looks familiar, but I'm pretty sure this is just the optional ones. I'm sorry, I really want to see which one was mine. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, no. I think I was Lab and Friends. I'm pretty sure I chose Lab and Friends. Hopefully that doesn't make me the worst kind of person. ...of Nintendogs for each breed on shelves at once. Thankfully, they narrowed it down to three, with each variant just having different types of dogs at the start, with all the others from the separate versions unlockable later on, so there's really no need to buy all editions. And yet... Here we are! Where? How? Nintendog's best friends would launch later on that featured the most popular breeds available at the start Aww. with, just like the others, the rest of them unlockable later, like the Pugs. So it's fundamentally a Nintendog's greatest hits that just gets worse as it goes on. I don't like the Pugs. Then Nintendog's Dalmatian and like Friends release. Pugs. Same deal as before. You know, for a game with no necessary addition to have five versions, this game has five versions. And they did it all again with Nintendogs plus cats <laughs> on the Nintendo 3DS. Though they launched that with three and kept it to that number. I assume Nintendogs on the DS got so many additions due to the sheer popularity of it all, and on the 3DS, not so much. But that didn't stop <laughs> Nintendo from attempting a multi-version release with another one of their franchises. In 2016, we got oh, Fire yeah. Emblem Fates. Plural! Two games, Fates Birthright and Fates Conquest. The gimmick of this game's story is that you're blood related to one family while having being raised by another, and these two families are at war with each other, so you have to decide who you fight alongside. A great concept for a story, no doubt, but I feel like they kind of squander that potential by releasing the game in this way. Your choice as to who to mm. fight with is made via purchasing one game over another. Birthright is siding with the family you were born with, Conquest the family that raised you. So you expect me to make this decision without actually playing the game or knowing the characters? Wouldn't it make more sense to just make this a standard Fire Emblem game and a few hours in after the story kicks off and you get to know everybody, that's when you have to make your decision? A decision that's supposed to be this impactful moment you personally feel passionate about? A decision that the entire game's concept is based around? And you expect me to make it in a target? Plus, both games are basically the exact same for the first few chapters until the player character makes their decision on who they side with a few hours in, which just emphasizes to me how this would feel so much better as the decision made in game rather than in the store. That's not to say there isn't enough content in both Birthright and Conquest to warrant them being separate releases. No, I mean, they're both full games in their own right with different stories and scenarios. But in my opinion, they're only full games in their own right from like a checklist perspective. Like, oh, 30 hours each, unique plot lines, different scenarios, but you don't really get the same experience just playing one side of the story here. So like, yeah, it's not like this isn't a full game's worth of content, but that doesn't mean it isn't one third of a full game at its core. Because there was a third version release. This one was only available as downloadable content. Fire Emblem Fates Revelation, where you try to get both families to work together. And all three versions were bundled together on a single Nintendo 3DS cartridge, exclusively in the Fire Emblem Fates Special Edition. Yeah, this pretty oh. much confirmed the split release was done more so for more sales rather than to enhance the experience in any way. I mean, they don't refer to Birthright, Conquest, and Revelation as three separate games. Rather, three paths. Hell, the back of the box calls it the complete version of Fire Emblem Fates, so it makes far more sense for everything to just be on one cartridge. Hmm. I don't oh. make the rules, I just enable them. For the most part though, Nintendo <gasps> keeps this release strategy exclusive to Pokemon because frankly, Incredible. it's the only one that's really been proven to work. Hell, they even tried it with spin-offs. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon used to be a dual release. I had on Blue Rescue Team. Why did I have Blue Rescue Team and not Red if I was a Red? Was there even a difference? Because I'm pretty sure I was Charmander. Maybe I had Red Rescue Team. 
Sorry, I nostalgia chat. Please, with the first entry having one on the Game Boy Advance and the other on the Nintendo DS. Oh. Red Rescue Team and Blue Rescue Team. You know, it's kind of cool blue. the box arts connect this because way. Because it was But the by S. themselves, like, what's selling you on this? <laughs> oh, man, I always wanted Squirtle to look down. Most of the differences come yeah. down to Blue Rescue Team being on the DS. Not how these games were designed around being separate Bang releases. Touch screen support, utilizing the dual screens. The DS screen aspect ratio is different. The music and graphics can be slightly different. And there are exclusive Pokemon to each version that you can unlock in the other version with a password. I guess Why it's like a Game Boy are these two there? separate games? It is pretty interesting how they're on separate handhelds, but that also makes it harder for them to interact with each other. Connecting two Game Boy Advances couldn't be simpler. Same with two Nintendo DSs. I don't even know how to somebody let alone make this work so oh, red rescue like a, team I remember players that can thing. connect to other red rescue team players yes, the same with blue rescue team players you can connect red rescue team to blue rescue team by plugging the game into the ds's gba slot but you can't physically connect the ds game to the gba game so if you want to do that you have to use passwords to trade version exclusive pokemon which you can just look up online can't really blame them for the lack of communication between the two games as being on two different systems will do that to you but this feels like they were making Making this game for the Game Boy Advance went, damn it, put it on the DS for a multi-platform <laughs> release, but decided to be cute and they gave each version a unique twist. They also crucified my productivity for the past three minutes. Mystery Dungeon continued to receive dual releases until Gates to Infinity on the 3DS, which was just one standard game. Then when Red and Blue Rescue Team were remade on the Nintendo Switch, they were combined to just my be one title. Red my little sister loves this game. Rescue Team DX. That's what happens with a lot of series. I try this out until eventually giving up and going back to what worked originally. Case in point, Yokai Watch, one of the biggest games on the Nintendo 3DS. It took Japan by storm in ways not seen since Pokemon's debut, which was just the beginning of the comparisons between the two franchises. I mean, both are RPGs, both are about kids mm. collecting and befriending unique monsters, both launched a huge line of merchandise, anime, movies, manga, spin-offs, so really, what's more similarity gonna do? While Yokai Watch was just one game, Yokai Watch 2 released similarly to any other Pokemon game. So two titles, cute. I can just imagine all the kids on the playground debating what do you prefer bony spirits or fleshy souls neither the differences are like any other pokemon fleshy game. souls version exclusive yokai in each one plus they eventually did a third version much like pokemon they use the dual release tactic again for the spin-off yokai watch blasters and yokai watch 3 but only in Japan, as when the game was localized, they just released one game. You know, that's probably due to a number of different things. The series was suffering from a decline in popularity alongside the game launching in North America in 2019 on the Nintendo 3DS. That's damn creepy. So, like, why put out two versions of the same game for a handheld and fundamentally its last year of relevancy yeah. in a series that was also fundamentally in its last year of relevancy. Aww. I assume Nintendo, who published it outside of Japan, said the same thing and took the third version of the game and just localized that. Yes, third version, as I've already discussed. That's oddly enough a common theme with dual releases. You put out two versions at the same time, then sometime later, you put out a third as the definitive release. After Pokemon Red and Blue came True. Pokemon Yellow which has a couple <laughs> gameplay story and graphical tweaks, which is what most of these versions consist of. Third versions would often follow each Pokemon game, and then we got Pokemon Black and White. Obviously, the third one's gonna be Pokemon Gray. But then they thought, well, why not make the third versions dual releases themselves? Bam, Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. To be fair, these are full-blown sequels to Black and White, not just better versions of them. So sure, doing this makes sense. But hey, Pokemon X and Y released? Surely there'll be a third version titled Pokemon Z. I mean, no, they made a follow-up to the anime based on Pokemon X and Y titled Pokemon XYZ. Surely this is gonna happen. Don't give your hopes up. Instead, we just got a flat out new set of Pokemon games three years later, Pokemon Sun and Moon. Now, those included special moves you could perform called Z moves. Okay, well, now you're just teasing me. After Sun and Moon, we <laughs> spread about a third version titled Pokemon Stars on the Nintendo Switch. Switch. Instead, we got Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon on the 3DS one year after Sun and Moon, enhanced with some alterations from the originals, just like most third versions of Pokemon before. It's just now they found a way to turn that third version into a dual release in of itself. I mean, they remade Pokemon Yellow for Nintendo Switch and turned it into Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. They turned the third version of a dual release that was meant to be just one game into two games. Who knows what else they're capable of? My little sister got Let's Go Eevee because um, she's in love with Eevee. 
I kind of disappointed. I wanted Pikachu. Film releases are interesting when you analyze them, especially when you realize they mainly only ever worked for Pokemon. Because there's a slew of other games that attempted the same damn thing, and they all flopped because what did they do? Exist. Austin Powers, oh behave, or Austin Powers, welcome to my underground lair. Oh man, should I breathe or hydrate? These games are fundamentally simulations of each Austin Powers character's computers with a few minigames available within. For the time, some of this can be a bit novel, like how there are video clips from the movies and how a very limited parody of Windows is in your pocket at all times. <laughs> after you make room. But when it comes down to the gameplay, it's just mini games that are only slightly different across both titles. Like, have you ever dreamed of what the extreme differences would be like between Austin Powers and Dr. Evil playing rock, paper, scissors? I am so sorry. What, Othello? Pac-Man? The only game that's different across both titles is the final one. In Old Behave, you get a platformer, and in Underground Lair, you get a reskin of another Game Boy Color game by the same developer, Evil Knievel. Mm. Looking on the back of the box is Four of them? They were playing four of these games? Who else would they have based them on? This fucking guy? Everything <laughs> about this feels forced. No. I feel like they only had three months to make an Austin Powers game, and they wanted to do a multi-game release at the height of Pokemon success because as much as I like Machop, I always wished he was Dr. Evil instead. Doing a dual release not only shows the intention by the publisher to just ride the coattails of another game series' success without riding the right coattails, but doing a minigame collection like this shows they wanted to make money and fast. You can't tell me this wasn't done because it wasn't the easiest way to get a game out. Case in point, Crash Purple and Spyro Orange for the Game Boy Advance. A crossover between Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, where this is a Crash game with Spyro's main antagonist as the enemy, and this is a Spyro game with Crash's main antagonist as the enemy? Whoa. And Fungus? Honestly, that's a really cool idea, and a great concept and reason behind making this a dual release. So why does this still elicit fear? This is a minigame collection disguised as a platformer. You run and jump around these levels where your goal is to find portals to play the minigames. That's all this damn thing oh. is. Just a bunch of random minigames stitched together through basic-ass 2D platforming hub worlds, because guess what? That's easier and quicker to produce than actual platforming levels. So instead of making a legitimately gripping and awesome crossover between two legendary franchises that have always been close to each other ever since their debut on the PlayStation, we got games created just to have appealing box art for toddlers. Oh, Mom, I picked Spyro Orange. Why? Because I... Why did you pick Dad? Bomberman delved into this release strategy with the Bomberman Max games. One you play as Bomberman, the other you play as Max. Who the hell would pick that one? Wanna play a Bomberman game? Yeah, on one condition. I don't wanna play Bomberman. But the character that dove headfirst into this shtick was Mega Man with the Battle Network series. I mean, the first two games here, no problem. Standard ass titles. Then starting with Battle Network 3, wow, it's almost like there's eight games. Close. Nine. Like, my lord, this was a lot. Even without the dual releases. Six games? On one console? D yeah, but still. Then Battle Network was followed by the Star Force series, and that consisted of three games spread across seven in total. Now, of course, considering these all to be separate games is hyperbolizing things a bit. I do agree. Except when Capcom puts all the Battle Network games in a collection, they say all ten Battle Network games and count the dual releases <laughs> as individual games. Man, I'd love to talk about the differences between each of the Battle Networks here, but after researching it, as somebody who's never experienced this series past the first entry, this is all gibberish to me so far. That's the problem. Uh, How is there not an immediate official resource on what's different in all these games most of the time? How do you expect me to pick between them? Thankfully, some games make it pretty easy. The game Nier released mm. here in North America as just that, Nier. But in Japan, it launched as Nier Gestalt on Xbox 360 and Nier Replicant on PlayStation 3. The idea I would was that Replicant. both consoles got basically the same game, but with different playable protagonists, with Replicant having a younger character and Gestalt having an older one. Other than that, they're basically the same game. So while I think it's a creative release, it's kind of pointless, especially considering they released on different platforms. I mean, that's still pretty cool, but most people only have one console or the other. And in Japan, most people only have one console or dear God, anything but an Xbox 360. So the element of the dual release, being choosing which version you want, isn't as prevalent here as most people just get whatever released on the console they own. When it came to North America, they just brought over Gestalt and released that on PS3 as well, though Replicant did finally make its way over here in the form of a remaster for PS4 and Xbox One, and they still find a way to confuse the hell out of me. Doesn't take much, though. You know, the whole Nier situation reminds me of something that I'm going to die one day. These Zelda CDI games, Link the Faces of Evil and Zelda Wand of Gamelon, 
are dual releases. Some of the earliest to be exact, back in 1993, these launched on the same day and share gameplay mechanics, presentation, the works. Which one would you pick? That one. Outside the of Pokemon, one. it seems that dual releases have died down considerably, and for good reason. Because why? This always felt like it was done for marketing and monetary purposes rather than to enhance the gameplay. Because in the end, I feel like most of these launch strategies ended up blowing up in these companies' faces. But hey, we're starting to stray further and further from the traditional Pokemon format because there are so many more forms these games can take. Oh, uh, can you say <laughs> Hey All Scott here? My therapist never recommended me to do any of this. Why would I waste a Hey All Scott here on that? Because I'm scared what's going to happen. It's just Sonic Boom. And Genghis Khan was just a f***ing guy. You have the different games on different consoles in the same series on the same day. Assassin's Creed Unity and Assassin's Creed Rogue, Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric and Shattered Crystal. Man, this is not going well today. <laughs> Looney Tunes Acme Arsenal and Looney Tunes Duck Amok. These Ooh. have absolutely nothing to do with each other, but they gave them similar box art and released them on the same day. Is there any benefit to releasing these games on the same day? I feel like putting two Assassin's Creed's out at the same time time makes it less likely somebody's gonna pick up both if you release them like a month apart that would give the player time to beat one and move on to the next or save up their money to buy the next and the goal of sega to release two games called sonic the hedgehog on the same day <laughs> sonic boom would always advertise itself as a game coming to both wii u and 3ds and when it launched they were two completely different titles. I don't get it, man. I do think staggering releases can be good for games like these, so players don't have to make a choice. But since these games are each on different platforms, they may be done so those with the handheld or the last generation systems don't feel left out on the big new game's release date. Oh, thank God. But when they put out two volumes of a game that should just be one full <laughs> one on the same day, like, man, Atari Flashback Classics Volume 1 and 2 on PS4 released on the same day. Don't even try to defend that. You couldn't put everything in one package? The same with Mega Man X Legacy Collection. Like, come on, guys. You just overcomplicate this stuff. In some ways, this is more complicated than the traditional Pokemon-like dual release. Or with that, it's not as much about having to buy two games to get the full experience. It's just about making the choice yourself. Either way, I'm in hell. Oh my god. Okay, I like Scott the Waz videos. They're always really easy to watch. His style is pretty good. Okay, I'm not gonna listen to this entire thing though. I'm sorry. I like the video. Got C and Double. Wow. Same. As a Pokemon fan, this is the closest Scott the Waz will ever get to making a Pokemon video, so I'm looking forward to this. I'm happy they got their wish. I do think there is one aspect about why Pokemon worked and others didn't that was only touched upon here. The social aspect. Pokemon got big at a time where the Game Boy was the mobile gaming device, but on top of that it especially exploded in Japan which is smaller. People walking around and deciding to trade or battle was pretty common. Huh. Most games with version differences just switch split them for no reason or for a focus on- or but, or for a reason to focus on single player experiences, totally missing on this. Hmm. It's interesting. I think, like, definitely, like, Pokemon, like, Pokemon itself is designed around the differences, it feels like, to a degree, more than all these other games. God's dedication of buying fates when he's not an RPG is admirable. He is not an RPG, this is true. Um, clearly, RPG fan. Hammer PS2 to pieces and snap OTS in half. That was pretty crazy. One magnetic, one, whoops. One important fact that you didn't mention about the two Zelda Oracle games is they were originally meant to be a trio. Huh. It got cut down to two because it was too complicated to do, and they still made up a third one in the end. The Minish Cap. Yes, I just successfully summarized that while live reading it. Let's go. It's cute hearing Scott name drop Pokemon like he knows what they are. I know them. The, ma the uh, monkey or whatever versus the Machop argument. I'm pretty sure Red had the monkey, whereas Blue had Machop. And the I remember as a kid looking that up and getting annoyed. Like that, that was the day I regretted having Red. I'm not going to lie. Another thing about Neo Replicant, and I should say Red, um, I think my little sister, I inherited it from her, but then I got Fire Red later on, you know? 
Um, it's cute hearing. So okay, I already read that. Another thing about Neo Replicant was the original version and the developer's original image. And I am the protagonist better suited hence the dev's choice. It was changed for NA release to appeal to a Western audience. Since Replicant is now in the West, it is pretty much the definitive version because of those things. Yes, the version I would have played. <laughs> and I've never beat Automata. I never even beat the first, like, A or whatever. Like, I never beat it. And I know there's, like, whatever. I'm not going to spoil anything. But, um, I want to do that. It'd be a really fun game. I feel weird, though, because I was, like, a decent bit of the way in. And I kind of have the feeling that I want to play it on stream. But, like, I'm a decent bit of the way in. So I'd have to, like, restart it. And I guess I don't really... Yeah, I could do that, honestly. This is, like, something from months from now, anyway. But, yeah. I have so many games I need to play. When Scott doesn't begin a video with his usual, Hey all, Scott here. You know something isn't right. So 1901 is the original shoe really Scott here on that. Cause I'm... <laughs> okay. Red and blue is a stroke of genius. Imagine if Pokemon was just released on the Game Boy as Pokemon. You ask your parents for a copy of Pokemon and they tell you we already own that game. Just share with your brother. You all know parents everywhere would do this. That's actually kind of true. Like, I feel like I knew kids who, like, had both versions because they were technically different games. It, that, 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 respect. Um, in, wait. Level 5 to developers of Yokai Watch had another fairly successful series called Inazuma 11, a football-based RPG. That sounds fun. And it followed the same release schedule. That's so interesting. Scott should have released two versions of this episode, each with minor differences. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you so much for watching, folks. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. Hey, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like the video, subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, and have a great rest of your day. Bye.